and welcome to this week's edition of You News, where you get You News. Our top story tonight might scare you to death. An NFT project launched last week called Old Ruse announced during Mint that one of its founders had died, allegedly. Another founder with the screen name of Boomer made the announcement in their Discord shortly after completely selling out of their collection and said they were willing to immediately transfer all rights and passwords and sell the project. When a skeptical mentor pressed for answers, this was the response. I know it's spooky season, but faking your death during Mint is either the best Halloween marketing or the worst claim ever to escape delivering on your roadmap. This obviously set NFT Twitter ablaze, offering future condolences to NFT founders that will suddenly kick the bucket after launch too. Over in centralized fiat land, Kanye West was recently informed by Chase Bank that he had 30 days to close his accounts and do his banking elsewhere. Those accounts, according to Ye, hold around $140 million. Recently on the Drinks Champs podcast, he posed the question, if that's how they'll treat me, then how are they treating you? Ye had been told to close his accounts following anti-Semitic remarks, amongst many other issues in this latest manic episode. The billionaire was later seen wearing an embroidered hat with the name Satoshi Nakamoto written on it, as a nod to Bitcoin and its fully decentralized nature. Trying to follow Kanye's rants is like trying to read the chart of a shitcoin launch, so I'm not going to get into direct quotes, but he then announced he would be purchasing crypto-friendly and conservative social media platform Parler. This announcement drew a response from Elon Musk in the form of a meme that was quickly deleted. You know, usually some of you little degenerates launch some rug pull in response to things like this, but I didn't see anything, which shocks me. Nobody wanted to launch a Yeezy 3000 honeypot. You launch tokens when the queen dies and McDonald's tweets, but not this? That's gotta be the litmus test for how bad you screwed up. Even the scammers won't honor your shit with a rug named after something you did. I guess you little degens have a shit level after all. Good for you. Giving you just one more reason to switch to crypto? PayPal recently backtracked some fine print in their terms of service, in which they included a policy to fine users $2,500 for misinformation. The penalties posted on PayPal's website would have been issued to users who promote misinformation or present a risk to user safety or well-being. The new policy was set to go into effect on November 3rd, according to the report. But a company rep said the change was published in error. Weird, because when most people and companies go to the effort of actually typing something out and attaching a monetary value to a penalty, they usually fucking mean it. Otherwise, why would it have been put there in the first place? Anybody remember the human centipede episode from South Park and how it was deeply embedded in the Apple terms of service? Yeah, well, letting PayPal fine you $2,500 for their arbitrary decision-making of your spreading misinformation like you live in a Black Mirror episode is honestly on par with being the end link of the human centipede. Close your PayPal account. Switch to Cash App. They let drug dealers use their platform with no problems. Or so I've heard. Now on to a story where the harmony has gone flat. A Twitter user with the handle Venture Coinist recently pointed out that starting a vague DAO and getting grant funding was an easy get-rich-quick scheme for many projects that claimed they'd build on Harmony One's blockchain. A few notable projects include Aura Dogs DAO, which claimed they'd sell NFTs and spread good vibes in the space, received $60,000 in grants. You know, because dogs don't usually spread good vibes for free. There was a $75,000 grant approved for a DAO that promised to build a light projection and never did, but I bet spending that money was lit. One of my personal favorites that received $75,000, Beta DAO. That was a DAO for pre-entrepreneurs, which must be what comes out of the tip of a real entrepreneur's penis when they look at their bank account. And of course, someone used the ultimate word for give me money, Africa, and was immediately given a six-figure grant for the Africa DAO that claimed they would educate African children through NFTs. Not only have these dev teams drained these funds and bounced, but more projects have evacuated Harmony's blockchain than actual people left Florida before Hurricane Ian. Sadly, Fort Myers is probably in better shape than that ETH bridge. I mean, 
just look at this picture of Harmony One's former employees at this point. It looks like a picture of Jeffrey Dahmer's grocery list. Our last story tonight is another U News update. Last week, we reported the Solana hack of Mango Market, where a hacking team named Abraham Eisenberg stole $114 million by exploiting a price authority known as an oracle. After coming forward and taking credit for the hack, Mango's token holders voted to let Eisenberg keep $47 million in exchange for the return of $67 million back to the project. The hackers referred to their robbery as a highly profitable trading strategy. Welcome to 2022, where hackers who steal money are just using a trading strategy and being robbed at gunpoint is just donating to at-risk youth. More concerning about the hack is that a large number of DeFi community members feel the hacker's reward was justified because code is law, according to a Twitter poll. What in the robot moral code of sentient AI voted for that? Eisenberg's windfall comes months after they reportedly robbed another project called Fortress Dow for $14 million. Between a fortress and a bridge, all they need to hack next is a moat. That's all for this week's edition of You News, where you get totally unnecessary, useless news. I'm Tupac's of Coors, and I'll see you next week.